I am. <laughs> the, uh, uh, this is kind of a show and tell today. I've got a, a story uh, to tell. Uh, imps and hummingbirds. Uh, imps because Daisy Making Jones was a Wedgwood designer that loved imps and elves and all things that crawled and swam and flew. And uh, hummingbirds because the pattern, the, the flying hummingbirds pattern is what sucked me in to this 30 years ago with Daisy and Wedgwood. The, in the first half of what I have to say, I'll talk more about pottery, and then in the second half, I'll try to pick up on Daisy. The, um, uh, Bill already mentioned the Wedgwood exhibit that's coming July through September, and that'll be at the Havel Beardsley House, correct? Uh, and um, so, so uh, Bill and, and uh, Jennifer Johns, our curator, knew that I had a small gathering of Wedgwood pieces and thought that maybe I could share those with you today and maybe that'll be kind of a peek under the tent for the exhibit that's coming this summer and fall. The, um, the, the exhibit itself will cover a lot more areas of pottery production that I could possibly deal with today. And, and besides, these are things that are personal to me, and so you're stuck with my choices <laughs> instead, of, instead of a wide variety of, of, of pottery. Um, you know, um, many, many people uh, think of Wedgwood in, in the uh, uh, traditional Jasperware Portland base, the vase. This is uh, 250 years ago or so. Uh, uh, Josiah Wedgwood started out, and and this is really the first piece that made the company famous. It's still essentially their trademark today, and and um, the lighter blue. They they made Jasperware in about 30 different colors. And, and the lighter blue is the traditional Wedgwood blue that, uh, that is still being produced and used today. And, and that's what a lot of people think of when they think of Wedgwood. Of course, they made dinnerware and, and, and uh, transferware and a lot of things that, that are in general use, but these pieces are more for art, art pottery rather than uh, utilitarian. The, um, uh, the, the luster pieces that they made are what I'm really here to talk about. And, and um, uh, luster, luster is shiny, and like a crow, I kind of like shiny stuff. So that's how I got into this. Uh, in, around 1990, um, I was at a Goshen antique show, and um, I found that I was just standing, staring at this piece. I didn't know exactly what it was. It looked kind of whoops, like like that. I think it might have been this piece right here. And one of these, at least, there there uh, a variety up here, and and I just couldn't take my eyes off of it. And I didn't know what it was. Uh, he told me, the seller told me it was Wedgwood. I, I was thinking of the other kinds of Wedgwood. Uh, but um, I, I walked away finally and didn't, uh, didn't buy it. But six months later, the seller was back in South Bend at Union Station, the old Union Station doing an antique show. And then when I saw it, it was just just like adopting a shelter puppy, you know. I had to take it home. And as I as I left, the guy stopped me and he said, "Oh, by the way," he said, "There's a little booklet that goes with this piece, and it'll tell you a lot more about how it was made." And I think the booklet may have been worth more than the piece, but but uh, to me it was because I I started reading about Daisy, the designer. And, and more about Wedgwood Luster. It was uh, eight pages condensed from a speech that a lady by the name of Una de Fontaine had made in 1963. 
and and it was condensed into that little booklet. And you know, once I started reading the booklet, you know, here we go. So, so 30 years later, uh, here I am to tell you about it. The um, uh, the 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 the, um, um, uh, the 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 lusterware. You know, I'm not a. I don't do pottery. I don't know. Maybe some of you do, but but I'll try to tell you a little bit about what luster is. Producing lusterware is a is a process that's gone on for. I think I read somewhere that maybe the ninth century. Uh, uh, AD or BC, it doesn't make much difference. It's a long time ago, and and uh, uh, people started uh, grinding metals down. Uh, I think it started maybe with silver and copper, and, and putting them in solutions of one sort or another, and then putting it in the kiln and making it uh, as as hot as you need to 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 bake out the solution they were in and leave the metallic sheen on on the pots and that started things this kind of luster didn't really develop until the 1700s and 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 then into the 1800s um uh, the the uh um, the the pot the, the the lusters are painted on or they're dabbed on or they're uh, the, in, in uh, many cases they're fired the pieces are fired five and six times as various layers of, of enamels and, 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 and luster and gilding of various things are put on and and it, they're fired at usually lower temperatures as they go along until the item finally uh, is polished and gets its its beautiful look the um at this point my lovely assistant over here um Joy Olson is is going to figure out how many of these small bowls we can effectively pass around so that you can take a look at the weight of the piece and then some of the colors and the patterns and the gilding and go ahead figure out figure tell us how What's it for? <laughs> well, did you bring your checkbook? <laughs> so, um, while she's while she's doing that, I'll I'll I have to say that the the flying hummingbird pattern is still my favorite, and and I decided that what I would try to do is collect all the sizes of octagonal bowls that Wedgwood made and try to get as many of the hummingbird patterns uh, in, in that, in, in the octagonal bowls. So I've, I've, got, uh, I've got eight of them here in, in the flying hummingbird. The largest one that I have is not flying hummingbird, but it's, uh, it's this ruby luster butterfly pattern with with an interior of, of mother of pearl on it also also butterflies and and um so i'm still looking for a 12 inch piece there's one out that's that's 12 inches but i haven't ever even seen one but um i hope to hope to get one someday the um the rest of what i have here what i own uh, sort of got acquired by accident. Uh, you know, they're, they're, this, is, this is ordinary luster, generally. Ordinary, there's ordinary luster and there's fairyland. And fairyland, uh, the only piece of fairyland that I have is, is this piece that has 
various imps and elves and uh, inside there's a Thumbelina motif on the inside. Thumbelina was Hans Christian Andersen. Daisy just stole it. And, and, and a lot of illustrations were taken from, from other people. Um, here, here are some other, here are some other examples, uh, uh, ways that you can get maybe closer to some of the things. Uh, there's some more hummingbirds, more hummingbirds. Then here we have a, a what's called a Candlemas uh, a vase. Let's see, Mark, can you uh, dim the lights just maybe one notch or... Um, well, try the other end. There you go. Uh, at, at any event, uh, the, the design here, here's a detail of some of those imps and, and uh, elves that, that uh, Daisy liked to put on. Here is an ordinary luster piece in the dragon pattern. I think it's uh, called a celestial dragon, if I remember right. And uh, uh, there are some imps on a, on a bridge uh, with a, with a treehouse. The um, uh, uh, the the uh, other things that are here include some some small vases, a tiny little hummingbird vase, a powder puff box, and on the top of the finial for the box is a is a is a model of a goddess that that is said that Daisy herself was the model for the uh, for, for whoever. Uh, 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 put that together. Um, Daisy didn't like to have her picture taken very often, so although I have one later, um, I don't know whether that looked like Daisy or not. The, um, so, uh, uh, there is, uh, let's see, now nah, we'll go on. I, I think uh, we'll just, we'll just end the pottery section here and move on to tell you a little bit more about Daisy while all these things are going around. Um, actually, Daisy was Susanna Margretta Makey Jones. And she was born in a place that I have to read, Wath upon Dern in England, which is over toward the west end, west of London. Um, and she was born on December 31st, which is my wife's birthday, by the way. And uh, only, she was born in 1881. My wife was not <laughs> born. Uh, but, but Susanna was always called Daisy from the very beginning. I don't exactly know why, but, but there you go. She was, as a young person, she uh, was kind of a tomboy. She definitely spoke her own mind and and these are things that weren't exactly considered Victorian ladylike in those years uh, particularly in the middle class and 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 above um, also at that point in time uh, uh, women weren't given the greatest opportunity for higher education in England and so Daisy, unlike her brothers, didn't go off to, to uh, uh, expensive uh, schools, but she was able to study art, and she did a lot of it. She, she was in a small boarding school uh, specializing in art, and then at 18, the, the family moved over toward the eastern uh, part of England, and she went to the Torquay School of Art. Um, as, as luck would have it, one of her family friends knew Cecil Wedgwood. And, and at, at, at some point in time, when Daisy was about 28, uh, this friend said, gee, I wonder, maybe you'd like to be a ceramic artist. And uh, Daisy thought that was a great idea. So she wrote 
uh, Cecil Wedgwood and asked to be an artist for him. And um, uh, he, he apparently responded and said, well, you'll have to be a start as a paintress. And most of our paintresses are girls 12 to 14 years old, half your age, and I don't know that you're gonna like this much. And she wrote back and said, well, I applied for a factory staff position. I didn't ask your opinion as to whether I'd like it or not. <sighs> Nevertheless, he hired her, uh, despite the response. And, and in 1909, off she goes to the factory to start being uh, an artist. She, uh, because of her art background, she um, advanced more rapidly than the 12 or 14 year olds. And uh, within a couple of years, she was working with the art director. And by 1914, you know, by five years after she arrived, she had her own studio next to the uh, head designer who was an older guy who kind of took her under his uh, wing and, and mentored, mentored her uh, uh, during uh, at least the early part of her career there. She, um, she started with children's nursery items, uh, animals, birds, and the like, and then maybe a dragon appeared and and uh, then by 1914, uh, the, 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 the uh, Wedgwood had gotten into luster again. It had kind of been a rediscovery of the methods that had been used. Uh, uh, it kind of been lost a bit. And, and they, were discover they discovered this and Daisy thought that that was wonderfully colorful and went with her idea of fantasy and so away she went producing this luster you starting with the ordinary luster the dragons the butterflies the hummingbirds fish a few other things and then as time went along uh started getting into into fairyland which uh, in 1921, she uh, wrote a book that, uh, a little booklet of, of fairy stories that went along with her designs. And this is just a copy of the book. I'll, I'll let Kirk start it around. And um, you can take a look at that. In, in addition to telling really neat stories um, of, of her own device, she would copy from other people and she wasn't totally original in, in what she did. Um, uh, one of her favorite uh, 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 people was a fellow by the name of Andrew Lang who wrote 13 large and wrote and edited 13 books of various fairy stories that had started Oh, he started writing them in the 1880s, 1889, I think, and through 1910, wrote 13 illustrated fairy books. And I brought one along. I'll let Rusty start that one around that side. They, uh, she, she would take colors and landscapes and characters, and she would mix them, not always in terribly great proportions, and, and, and put them on uh, 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 these uh, bowls and vases and, and uh, uh, the, the, uh, the book that ultimately Una de Fontaine, who, who, who did the little, or whose speech produced the little booklet, she decides to write a 300-page book in 1875 that talks about uh, Daisy, talks about ceramic production, has wonderful pictures of, of uh, the uh, fairyland that, that Daisy designed. And uh, that, that book lists like 225 different patterns 
that were combined combinations of these fantastic characters. Um, the this was all happening here at the end of World War One. We're we're in 1918 here. Uh, uh, you know, 1914 she gets her studio. 1918. The fairyland is, is, is going to take off because why? Because English people have been in their drab home life during World War I. Uh, uh, it's, it's, been, it's been pretty rough and now they're ready to have some color in their lives and some of the materials that are used to make luster, some of the, the uh, minerals and, and so forth have been in short supply. So, uh, well, and on top of that, of course, we all know that the English people love fantasy and stuff that lurks in the shadows. You know, think Lord of the Rings and Harry Potter and all that sort of stuff. Uh, the, the, so, it, so it went over pretty well. Um, she, was, she was an eccentric character. Um, she... Also, because things were going pretty well, she became kind of self-important. And, and since she knew the Wedgwood family, she had kind of a different relationship than most of the artists and designers and, and producers in the, in the factory. So, but, but she was well-liked. She was very creative. She um, participated in a lot of extravagant company uh, celebrations. Um, at one point, uh, on the 200th anniversary of the birth of Josiah Wedgwood, they had a big do, and she and a hundred paintresses, gives you an idea how many paintresses they had producing this stuff, dressed up in costumes like the Portland vase. You know, looking just like the vase, and these hundred, hundred patrices waltzed around, uh, uh, presumably in a parade down the middle of the factory. I don't. I'm imagining that, of course. But she, uh, she, she used that creativity at home as well. Uh, it was said that she, when the, when they had holiday dinners, she would. Uh, bar the doors to the dining area and build these elaborate centerpieces and wouldn't allow anybody into the uh, uh, room until she was done with them. And she was, uh, uh, it, it, it was both annoying and, and enjoyable for the family. Uh, I think I've got, uh, in addition to some, some more pictures here of of elves and uh, various bowls, interiors of bowls, and and uh, various patterns. This is one of my favorites, the ghostly wood, which is the uh, uh, the white the white figures are the ghosts, but there's also, I think, a little panda and a little insects and maybe a turtle and a frog and, and bats flying in the air and, and fantastic things that you would put together. Here, just, just to toss along, is a different kind of Wedgwood luster that will come up if you went on eBay and looked for Wedgwood luster, this would come up. It's a more recent piece. It is luster. It is Wedgwood. Uh, but, but it doesn't fit with Daisy and her period of time. This is probably a 1950s uh, piece. What, uh, uh, what ended up happening though was that what, you know, what goes up must come down. And, and uh, toward the end of the 20s, the economy in England was changing. The depression was affecting them as well as, as here. Uh, our stock market had crashed. Uh, profits were declining. And on top of that, a whole bunch of new Wedgwoods were in charge. And, a, a, and Cecil was gone. 
a number of the Wedgwoods had been had been killed in in service uh, in World War One. Uh, now a new Josiah was uh, in in place in 1931, and uh, he was uh, not a Daisy fan. And um, so they had a discussion, and 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 uh, uh, Daisy was asked to resign or retire, but she somehow didn't get the message and continued to show up at work, and that uh, that lasted for a couple of weeks, I guess, and then she, according to Fontaine here, uh, Josiah and Daisy had a discussion and a. And a, a blazing row, she he, she calls it, and on on Daisy's way out, she had a young assistant smash all the display pieces that were in her studio, and away she went. So that was the end of, the end of her uh, career at Wedgwood. She stayed around uh, Staffordshire for a couple of years, mingling with her former associates and colleagues and then uh, eventually uh, went back to live with her mother and her sisters in the family home. Um, her mother uh, uh, became ill and died, and then Daisy became uh, more ill herself. Uh, she, she liked gardening. She returned to her name Susanna and gave up Daisy, maybe because she wanted to shed the Wedgwood uh, aura, and uh, right. she loved fantasy. She made toys for the local children, and uh, but uh, but in uh, July of 1945 she died, uh, age of 63, which I'm beginning to consider very young at this point. And um, now, long after her death, uh, Fairyland has regained its stature. Uh, as one of the more collectible of Wedgwood pottery pieces. So that, uh, you know, I don't think I showed Daisy. There she is. Uh, looks like anybody's grandmother, right? <laughs> but uh, that was obviously later in her, her life. Uh, it's the only it's the only picture other than one during that Portland vase celebration way in the background. She, you see her with a shawl over her head and looking much like the goddess on top of the uh, uh, finial on the putter puff box. So that's the story about Daisy and all I know about Wedgwood putter. If there's a Question: I could try take a try at it, uh, Dree. Yeah. Um, so I know older Wedgwood pieces, especially, they did not let anybody put their signature on their pieces. Any of the artists? Does she have any sort of marking? Um, um, you're you're absolutely right. Nor the the the, the at the time Wedgwood wasn't into having the artists put a mark on it. Uh, when when Cecil and his brother went off to World War One, Mrs. Cecil and and and, and her uh, sister-in-law were basically in charge, even though they didn't carry the title. And it, uh, there there are some examples shown in in the book about during that period they allowed Daisy to add a, a, a mark or two of different kinds, about four or five different marks that appeared many times not on the bottom of the piece, but, but in the design itself. Uh, initials or, or even their old name. Uh, and, and occasionally on the bottom of the piece, but, but it was rare. You didn't so see you it all. I don't have anything like that, no, no. Hey George, were they, are they all one-offs? I mean, that, there's no more in the bowl like that one? Uh, no, I'm a, I, they, they made this as a production piece and they probably made 
thousands. Uh, um, I, I, I don't have an exact production artwork, number, but the artwork the, was done on each one of them, or the, the, all, the hundred paintresses are all out there. The much much of this art was done with a transfer. With uh, they they would design a pattern, and then that was put on tissue paper, kind of thing, and then somehow they managed to cut the paper in the right way so that they could impress that pattern on. And the same way with some of the gilding too. It was it was a pattern. Now in many cases um in many cases the the luster effect was so indistinct in a way that if they hadn't put a design if they hadn't repeated that design in the gilding you'd never know that it wasn't just a blob um and so so the the you know putting they had to sort of outline uh, what what they had done in the glaze because glazes run they don't always stay where they're put and uh, uh, so it was a lot of handwork and as I said many of these things were fired four four or five times <laughs> question back here The, the, you mean there? On the bottom of your piece is where it says Wedgwood. Oh, the well, there's a, the, the, it's the Portland vase. It's the, uh, their, their company mark that they use essentially is that. Um, now that changed. Uh, uh, it, it did, but. Mm -hmm. Right. We'll be featuring all those. Yeah, so I believe Maker's Marks for Wedgwood is, is a whole topic in itself, and that'll be a, a segment that gets discussed in the exhibit. And you can you can pay it? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, of course. There, there, there is also a company called Wedgwood with an E in W E D G E. W O O D, which is a different company. And there's Wedgwood and Sons. Well, yes. It was an offshoot. It was it was a cousin company. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah